Hey, welcome to Thought Seize Interviews, the show where we seize the thoughts of our guests while playing games of Magic the Gathering. I'm your host, Lucas Frank. That's Cole Smith, and today we're joined by the man behind the band, Death Heaven, Carrie McCoy. Hello, Carrie. What's happening? What's going on? Um, Carrie, are you familiar with Magic at all? Uh, I played Magic for about two weeks in ninth grade, and uh, um, more than two weeks, probably like a month. It was pretty. It was pretty fun from what I remember. And then I was grounded for a bunch of it over winter break, and I would just make decks and play myself. But <laughs> uh, yeah, that was like two thousand two, and uh, I remember being like, eh, I don't know if I need to spend money on this and. Like, this is, like, more... This is not in the direction that I should be traveling with my life. <laughs> I feel like yeah. that's that's the arc that, like, every Magic player that I know has, where they played in, like, eighth grade, and then at some point in their adult life, we're like, you know, I'll check this out again. You know, I have more than, like, $6 to my name, so fuck it. Yeah, yeah. It was just, it was just at the time, like... Like I would, I'd for sure try it again. It looks fun. I remember being so fun, but it was also like, man, like I'm like 14 and like this is so far away. Like, like this is not like where I sh should be spending my time. I should be like smoking weed with like <laughs> other people. I don't, you know. <laughs> At the time, that was my thinking. Totally. Um. So, as, as is our tradition on um on thought these interviews we've built a deck for you mm -hmm. uh so this one uh okay this one is kind of amazing lucas found this card drake <laughs> drake haven uh, yeah you're, you're a drake fan huh yeah yeah uh I, yeah man i was a drake fan since day one man this is crazy <laughs> So then we kind of took, took. I I flipped out when I found that card. I, I thought I, I thought. Look. Yeah, I thought that it was like, I thought that it was like a Photoshop thing, but this is a real card. It's a real it's a card. Real... So we wow. kind of just built a deck around this card. Um, so like, you know, basically we're playing in a format called Historic, uh, on this uh software called uh Arena. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, you know, basically we want to discard or cycle cards, which, you know, you'll see us do. And it makes uh, Drake's. And who knew Drake was a 2-2 uh, flying blue creature? You know, <laughs> uh, greatness comes in many forms. <laughs> and then we have another Drake over here, Crackling Drake. Uh, and, and then, like, kind of, you know, the rest of the deck is just built around this. Wait, Carrie, did you did you see the meme I posted or the like, you know, that Drake with Drake's face on it? Did I yeah. Send that to you? Oh, I, yeah, I saw that and I thought it I thought it was like I didn't know that a Drake was a dragon. It's like a weird flying lizard thing. I, I guess they're dragons. Yeah, I think oh, it's okay. a dragon. I don't know. Um, yeah. So yeah, then like the rest of the deck is just kind of, you know, around that. So we're going to and it's and it's bad. Uh, it's a bad. It's a bad it's, deck. It's not good. Well, yeah, you have it. You have. It's called God's Plan. Yeah. And uh, that's like not my favorite Drake song. So. <laughs> what should we change it to? Cole changed the name of one of my other decks. I noticed. I, I did. Yeah. <laughs> God's Plan to Weenie. Weenie. Uh, yeah. So okay, let's let's uh let's fire it up, huh? For those who aren't familiar with Magic, it's uh, Cole, uh, It's basically a game where you know uh, each player is a planeswalker of the multiverse, and um, uh, you have you start with twenty life points, and then you try and get the opposing person down to zero. Whoever gets goes to zero first loses, basically, and you cast all these creatures and spells to try and kill your opponent with. That's basically how the game works. Um, Carrie, you. Um, you got into you you had turntables when you were in high school <laughs> and then you sold them to buy a bass to join a, a grindcore band true or false uh partially true okay uh yeah i had turntables um for those that 
don't know or whatever, I uh, loved like uh, hip hop and rap music since pretty much I was like 10 years old or something like that. Um, and when I was in eighth grade, I think, what you, no, 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 not eighth grade. That I was like in, I was after, it was after I was a sophomore or whatever. And I was like, had spent like a couple years being like punk, you know? And uh, like, I, I got grounded for smoking weed uh, at school. I got kind of like weirdly like, suspended and taken out of school for a year and uh my mom bought me like as a way to like kind of channel like teenaged angst or whatever into something uh productive productive yeah she bought me acid 4.0 which is like i don't even know if yeah yeah (laughs) uh yeah she bought me acid 4.0 which was like this like uh music production software and i like had a ton of fun with it and then was making these beats for my friend Manuel, who rapped at the time, uh, R.I.P. And uh, so his brother was a DJ. And uh, so I went over to his house and like could see his brother's like turntables and stuff. And I thought it was so cool. So uh, essentially that summer, I got my first job working for my um, uncle, like moving like patio like pottery around and just being super lazy about it and uh and essentially spent the whole summer saving up like eight dollars an hour or whatever and had like 1500 bucks at the end of the summer and my mom and all my family was like great like you're gonna get a car and instead i bought like uh turntables and a mixer and a stereo and a uh like flight case for them hell yeah yeah and so, yeah, I had those for like um, a couple of years. And then, uh, yeah, for I was in a grindcore band, but I did not sell them for the bass. The bass I had, I think, was for free. It was like the shittiest Ibanez. Like, man, it was so I don't even know what it was. It was really shitty bass, but I like found it somewhere or something like that. And, and that's uh, I. I sold the turn. I sold sold the turntables and stuff to Guitar Center to fix the brakes on the van that we had bought for uh, <laughs> for, for touring our, for the tour. Yeah, in vain too. I, I remember taking them to the dude at in Pro Audio in the Modesto Guitar Center, and he was like looking at me like, "Dude, like, don't do this." He literally told me that he was like, "Don't like, don't you, we're not going to give you a good deal. Like, you shouldn't do this." But it was like we either you either he, they gave me like two hundred fifty bucks and like. At the time, it was two Stanton TT200s, which was like the lowest priced direct drive turntable you could get, which is anyone who's DJed vinyl before knows that you want a direct drive. Um, and like a Stanton SA5 mixer. It was like all like I did my research for like the whole summer of like what stuff I should get. And I got like the, the cheapest mid-level stuff I could get. And uh, yeah, the, the whole thing went up like the whole thing wound up costing me like about a thousand bucks and I sold all of the stuff for like, yeah, 250 fixed the brakes on the van and then they shit out like a couple of weeks, like not even like 10 days later or something like that. It was so brutal. (laughs) Yeah. But man, it, uh, you know, I was like not living at home at the time. They were just sitting there anyways. It would be cool to have them still, but, uh, the going on tour was like obviously the priority. It was a really long winded answer for the question. No, that's that's what I'm looking for. Um, I uh, I felt like because my source said that you sold them for to join the the grindcore band, which I felt like was a good you know uh, analogy for for you kind of as a creative person in some ways. Not that you like sold <laughs> out one side of your creativity for another, but but that you have these kind of two you have this love for these two different genres that a lot of people think are like at odds or because you're a metal guy you wouldn't you wouldn't be interested in these things but Mm -hmm. i mean maybe that's kind of a a binary silly thing to say but um i uh i think that just like describes a lot about you and your your early interest um yeah but like a kind of like a going for a spaz thing at the time where they're uh, i believe their drummer was like a Hip hop DJ guy. Oh really? Yeah, That's DJ not... Eon, I think. 
I can't. I and, might be off on that, but. And George was in the band. Yes, George was in the band. Yeah. Wild. What was it called? Rise of Caligula. Sick. Hell yeah. <laughs> um. What uh, can you tell us, Carrie? What the what the vineyard is? <laughs> Man, what is this like Nardwar? I, I told you I did my <laughs> we consult, research. We consulted with Nardwar for sure. <laughs> oh my god, the vineyard. Uh all right, well I gotta like edit parts of this out. Uh you the can. vineyard it's, it's literally live. <laughs> no, I know. Deaf heaven. I, I know that like uh the vineyard was a gas station. It was a company that owned a couple gas stations in uh, the Central Valley in Modesto. Um, yeah. Your source. <laughs> where, you, where you worked. <laughs> where I worked, yes. I was uh, employed there, uh, I forget, like 2007 to 2008, essentially. Um, I also worked at a gas station mm -hmm. uh, as a summer job. Um, and um, I just, I thought that was an interesting anecdote that I didn't know about you. Yeah. Uh, uh, anything more you want to say about the vineyard, Carrie? I thought you'd give me more on that, honestly. Um, uh, there's, you know, there, you, there's like a bunch of stuff that happened at the vineyard. But um, I'll just say that uh, the vineyard taught me that is it is impossible to hide being on coke while you're at work. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, man, like I had long hair too. And so it was like, <laughs> like I would just be like doing bumps in the bathroom and just like, like go back to work and just like my hair would be like sticking to my face. And like, I'd be like, you, they served chicken there too. And I'd be like giving chicken to people. And I remember this guy being like, man, like no offense, dude, but can you, can someone else like give me this? <laughs> like, <what's... laughs> like had it showered in like two days, just super gross and oh man, this is depressing. Cole, you, it's bumming me out it? just thinking about it. <laughs> oh, oh, that's good. Yeah. Um, Gary, how'd you get ripped so fast? I'm kind of like I'm trying to get get healthy, you know, and yeah. and you just got ripped incredibly fast. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't consider, I'm definitely not like ripped at this moment, but pre COVID I was in probably the best shape of my life so far. Um, really, honestly, it was just, I have like a naturally or had as a kid, like a naturally fast metabolism. Um, it turns out that when you, uh, put a bunch of garbage in your system and slow your metabolism down to a crawl with drugs, uh, you will balloon up <laughs> and like, don't do anything and don't do any like type of, uh, activities at all, except for do drugs and stuff. Uh, you'll get big. Uh, but when I got sober, um, I just was like, I'll, I'll, I just kind of dove head first into fitness and stuff. Um, and uh, the thing that really helped the most was learning uh, weight training with my friend Tyler, who's uh, he plays bass in that band, uh, Touche More. And me and him, like, after, let's see, around Christmas of 2018, we started just, he, he like, knows all about that stuff. And he kind of showed me, like, his routine, and we would go to the gym all the time. And, um, yeah, and then I would just just you know just ate healthy it really isn't that hard if you just like do the stuff but uh yeah with gyms closed and uh everything being slightly depressing it's a bit hard to get motivated these days but oh, yeah definitely. Back. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah because you you not only got sober you like went vegan quit smoking cigarettes and got incredibly ripped in an incredibly short amount of time and yeah. uh yeah it's it, it was more like, yeah like I, I remember talking to you about this at the time like outside tropical or something and being like 
yeah, it's it's not like that. It's it was harder for me to do all of that stuff. I only ever wanted to smoke when I was right on drugs or whatever, and yeah, like that just happened to be all the time. So like I looked like I was a smoker, but I really wasn't. And uh, so I just didn't. Ne- I never had the urge after being sober. And then yeah, with the rest of it was just kind of like, what do I channel all this like energy and stuff into and like many people who have uh trudged that that road, road of happy of, destiny road of happy yeah. destiny yeah uh i i tapped in with the gym and it was uh <laughs> sick. i cannot wait to go back i cannot tell you how much um I yeah because like but that's such a healthy approach I, I, cole and i are both also sober and i mean you could say that we're not ripped um and that we've channeled that energy maybe into like magic the gathering or something <laughs> or i don't know what yeah but you guys also never like uh like drugs of choice for diff- different different things affect different people in different ways and the way it affected me like it just it didn't like some people wind up looking like you know i don't know like you know they get heroin chic or whatever but uh a lot of people don't. A lot of people get big, and I was <laughs> one that got big. And uh, yeah, I was ready to not be big anymore, personally. You, not, you not, nothing, nothing wrong with being big, but just me personally, you know. Yeah, but you not only lost weight, you got like very ripped, which is tight. <laughs> and <laughs> and, uh, and I respect you for that. <laughs> um, Carrie, does metal have a glass ceiling? He's being in a metal band. Oh, wait, there, one there... sec. We've ca- somebody's cast a thought sees. What are we supposed to do? Oh, uh, we're sp- we Venmo carry five dollars. All right. Really? Carry, yeah. you just won. You just won five dollars. Uh. <laughs> Man, first uh, yeah, person give me money that's not Gavin Newsom in quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just won five bucks, and if they cast it again, you win another five bucks. It's true. Yeah. Um, Carrie, does metal have a glass ceiling? Should I start a metal band? Uh, um, like it, it depends. Uh, uh, in general, I would say if your goal with music is to get gigantic and you know fame and fortune and stuff like that then yeah maybe starting a metal band isn't the best uh route for you but uh you know sure people told that to metallica too and uh i saw them play a couple nights at the rose bowl uh in general uh though yeah i would say these days like yeah sure it's 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 of course inherently less accessible than other genres of music yeah is that um, do do you hate uh, people who like metal? <laughs> I don't hate anyone. Yeah, uh, I uh, I don't hate I don't hate people that like metal. I I like some metal, you know. Um, yeah, I find that. Uh, uh, what I dislike is is closed mindedness in any form. And um, there is a tendency, maybe a little bit more than in other genres, for uh, people in metal and especially uh, underground forms of metal to be slightly uh, closed-minded at times. And that has perturbed me. I mean, at, yeah, uh, you guys are a pretty divisive band in the metal community. Is, like, like, why would you say that is? Why would I say that is? Um, but I have to reach into my 2013 bag for this uh, answer. Uh, no, I don't know. It's, uh, you know, why are we, I don't know, you know, like it's, we when we started doing this thing we get it kind of from two sides essentially like or we used to it the the thing is at this point it's most people i think have just said what they need to say about it and like the conversation is kind of boring but we kind of either get it from like you know 
uh, major label, like active rock size, like, hell yeah, this kicks ass kind of guys. Or we get it from like, uh, you know, uh, like people that are on like forums and stuff that are trading like tapes or it's either like the, like, I like music that's, I like metal that's so big and is like, the fourth generation removed from Pantera and Alice in Chains or whatever. And like, this is, I don't understand what you're doing. So I, so I don't like it. Or it's people that are like, I know what you're doing. I knew what you were doing when Olver invented it or, you know, whatever. Like, you know, I knew what you were doing when this, when this and this, and here's all the stuff you're ripping off and whatever. And like, even if you weren't ripping it off, like, I think that stuff sucks anyways, because I like this, you know, World War One themed war metal band that sounds like, <laughs> you know, like there's, it goes, the rabbit holes go so deep. So like, uh, yeah, like we, we get it from both sides. I think, um, I don't think either of those people really like care that much anymore though. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, I think for both of, for both of them, for both of those groups or the, for all the people that don't like us or whatever, I, it's kind of just like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, I'm kind of just. I'm. You know, no one has to like it. I. We didn't ever. We didn't like trick anybody. You know, we <laughs> put this stuff. Like our goal when we started the band was, I wanted to work at Whole Foods and play house shows. Like that was it. We just said <laughs> yes to everything that came afterwards. So, if you would do something different, then uh, that's you. But yeah, that's what we did with it. It's weird when people get so up in arms about music in that way. When the, when they're like, they take it personally. It's like. Yeah, I don't, I don't really understand. Or they they've taken upon themselves to. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think people I see, know. uh, you know, musician ha- like see themselves as having some kind of ownership over musicians. You know, they're like, you're here to entertain me, so like I make the rules. Right. Yeah, I think it's an identity. It's an identity thing, and that's cool. Like everyone has that. Um, you know, like when I was. 14 or whatever i i loved uh dude i loved like afi i still stand behind like the first you know first what is it first five afi records and like those eps and stuff but then when sing the star came out and i was i was 14 and they sounded like a rock band and i didn't have the uh i didn't have the like uh references that they were making you know i didn't understand that you know there was a lot of bands that they were clearly referencing in in that record or stuff that they were going for with their new their new vibe that i just was like how come this doesn't sound like shut your mouth and open your eyes or black sails in the sunset uh and like on top of that there was like bro dudes who were like in my science class or whatever who would be like i saw that band on fuse like oh, <laughs> like you said you know like the and it was kind of like infuriating because it was like, man, I love this band and like you just don't understand. And this is my identity and stuff like that. So of course, listening to it years later, I understand that like, yeah, those are those are good records. But uh, I guess my point is, is, yeah, like all of that people like to have, you know, become someone's identity. And so if if one of the things chained to your identity changes or it becomes more popular or whatever, uh, that obviously has an effect on um how you view yourself or how you feel people are viewing you and if that bothers you you know you're going to react negatively that's a that's a really good point and it actually segues perfectly into my next question um is big rito back in this bitch thank god (laughs) (laughs) i have no idea what you're talking about (laughs) I don't even. I don't either, really. Do you want to? Ex- do you want to explain to the audience? <laughs> yeah, I used to do graffiti. Uh, my friend Brandon gave me this name when we were drinking a space bag in a park one time. <laughs> I said I should. He said I should write Big Rito. <laughs> and uh, there was one time at uh, the place we were practicing. Where I was like strung out and would be in the bathroom all the time, uh, and would just write like Big Rito on the wall while I was like <laughs> doing drugs or whatever. And uh, and he would like they kept buffing it. And then one time I like was like they buffed it, and I came back, 
and just wrote it again and wrote like, I'm back, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Um, <laughs> and your I mean, source. Yeah, who's your source? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you told me you told me once about your routine <laughs> when you were I think you were in San Francisco and you worked at like a pizza shop or something and every day you would bike to band practice. Will you talk about that time, like early death heaven days when you're really grinding it out? Um, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> man. Um, yeah, that was at, uh, that was actually not at the, uh, gas station. That was at, um, or the gas station. Man, I've had a bunch of great jobs. Uh, <laughs> That was at the that was at the Ben and Jerry's on Hayton Ashbury. Um, yeah, I would essentially ride to work, work at Ben and Jerry's. Um, at the time, I was uh, I was had enrolled in a grand total of one class at uh, City College in uh, in San Francisco to like get my feet wet because um, I dropped out of high school and so I wanted to like my goal was to be like a, a history teacher. And so, um, yeah, I would like bike, I would ride my bike to work, work, and then afterwards I would ride to City College, which I can't remember exactly where that is. It's like kind of by like the Balboa. It's far, it's far from Haight Street. Um, I would ride to City College and then, uh, sit through, uh, history of the united states after 1900 which was a really good class like i missed like three classes of it and i still got like a c because it was like really interesting the teacher was really good too um but it was my way of like getting my feet wet to like get back to school again mm -hmm. uh so yeah i would ride to ben and jerry's then ride to ccsf and then ride from uh from there to uh my girlfriend at the time's house um in uh, Petrero Hill on 26th and man, I can't remember exactly what the street was like 26 and I can't remember uh it was like at the top of this hill and then would hang out there for a little bit and then ride after everyone got done with work I would ride to the uh lockout it wasn't on Turk and Taylor it was the one that was on um Man, I cannot. I can like see it, but I can't. It's on Jones and man, what is that? There was it was like a practice space. I was. There. I don't know if it's there anymore, but I remember that uh, girls used to practice there. And I want to say like we heard like Tamarin there one time too. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I can't remember exactly, but yeah, this is like 2000. This is like summer of 2010. And then would ride from there back to my girlfriend's house and spend the night and party or whatever, and then like do that like essentially every day it was like a it was something like riding your bike like 35 miles a day or something it was it was a lot it's insane. yeah but it was it was one of those things where you would we would i'd be done with work in school and then would be at her house and just hanging out and she lived with like 11 people and it was like this really cool like kind of big party house kind of and then like everyone would be like starting to like you know do whatever they were going to do that night this is weird and then, uh, and then, but I, but then we would have to go, we were riding roads to judo at the time. So, uh, I would have be like, man, like I'd love to hang, but I got to do this cause this is like important. And you know, we had like, we, I think we had just signed with death wish. So I was like, man, we, we really need to take advantage of this uh, situation. So. Hell yeah. Yeah. That so made that story made an impression on me just like the constant grind biking all over san francisco mm -hmm. um and um i uh i wanted to ask you about oh god i have so many things on here i have desto dub on here i have um your fight with dale also from a from a so from a source um <laughs> Cole, you want to ask Carrie something? Um, I mean, I, I'm just curious. You know, we talked a little bit about, like, um, 
we talked a little bit about just like you know being sober now and like you know versus these kind of like different different stories of your life you know in you know 10 or whatever years ago and like what mm. like like what do I, I feel like when whenever we were on tour you know we would be like oh you guys have any good shows recently oh my mic's still quiet hold on is that better check 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 um we would we would go on tour and um they i would be like oh you have any good shows recently they'd be like oh man yeah Deaf Heaven was here. It was fucking crazy. Those dudes are crazy. <laughs> and, and like, you know, just like talking, talking here about, about stuff. Um, like, what do you guys like in, in 2021? Uh, the band? Yeah. Just as people, you know? Um, yeah. Uh, well, I would say like, you know, from our tour or whatever, when we toured together, it we're we're all about the same as as that you know i mean like i don't think much has changed it's 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 you know my routine is pretty um it, like for this for covid and stuff like that it's pretty it's pretty like pretty much the exact same every day you know i wake up and check like the surf report and then text group chat with a bunch of people that i surf with and then see who's going where, what anyone's doing, and then go there, and then try and surf, and then come back, and then just like, you know, answer answer emails and have some depressing conversation about money, and uh, <laughs> and then yeah, and then like work on I mess around on Ableton and stuff a lot, uh, yeah, and kind of just plan for the future, like, um, you know, George and I will like talk a lot about like what what's going to be coming up in the next couple of years or whatever so that's pretty much it the the rest of the dudes you know um i think g is kind of on the same thing i think he like he's got stuff that he's he's working on um but he's you know he kind of like steers the ship a bit so he's he's way more in depth with all of that stuff and then he's i think he just he goes for a run and like watches tv and hangs with his girlfriend um yeah talking to g at the beginning of quarantine had like an impression on me it just felt like i was trying to like step out of this zone where like everything i had to do had to have some kind of meaning you know and then yeah. george was like oh like i'm learning to uh like shoot film and develop film and i'm learning how to like produce stuff and like there it all seemed like skills that he was like trying to build up in order to like eventually use for the band you know but it was also just like developing these hobbies and it was honestly really inspiring and kind of like changed the direction of um my like quarantine uh habits or whatever yeah i, I think you know i tried to do the same thing too i i kind of like um you know i used like that early when the government was at least pretending to give a fuck about people, uh, I used that a lot of that early money to kind of like buy a like a bit of a home studio situation, mm -hmm. um, and then I've just made it my mission to kind of just like learn, you know, just watch a bunch of YouTube videos and stuff, and and do that, have that kind of be my thing. Um, I think everyone is kind of kind of on that, and if you know if you're not, like that's cool too, you know, like. I don't know what like what 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 everyone's doing, but I know like you know Kush is uh, he records bands and he's making his own stuff and he's surfing in Massachusetts and I know Shiv is making Heaven's Club stuff and mm -hmm. all that you know Dan has talked about how he's got a couple of things that he might like be working on to play uh, play drums on for some other people you know and then we've got like we've got stuff that uh as a band that is uh will be eventually ready to to be coming out <laughs> so yeah. you're always you're always working on stuff as a band yeah yeah but you've yeah. also been like working on just kind of your own stuff it sounds like or just like you know stuff for fun or or it, it sounded like you're um saying something like that yeah i've been like uh, you know i 
kind of just de- tried to devote my, I, you know, I, I never had, you know, Ableton or, uh, I never like dove into the, the nitty gritty stuff of, of music, like music production, the technical side, you know, I like mm-hmm. kind of prided myself on, is it prided or pro it's prided, <laughs> prided myself on, uh, Oh yeah, I'm like not a gear guy, you know? And like, I'm not really a gear guy, but also like it's, I you know it's kind of cool to just figure out like you know like what envelopes are you know or you know figuring out like drum buses and compression and all these things are really interesting and Mm -hmm. yeah so I've been you know just the other day I was like make like sampled like a primal scream song and just spent like three hours like taking it apart and chopping it up and you know putting like break beats behind it and it's just you know that kind of stuff is just fun you know Hell yeah. Yeah. I've always been pretty bad at the compute, the, the digital side of things, too. I've been trying to get better. Um, yeah. And uh, sometimes it can be the most frustrating thing where you spend half the time working out some logistical issue or some, you know, technical, you lost your file or some bullshit like that, and you're just trying to figure it out <laughs> like that that uh i know that happened to you recently but that genuinely happens to me all the time um, yeah it's so rough. but um, you know, it's, it's cool it's cool to get in the weeds yeah hell yeah um okay we have a segment prepared for you my dear bud um and it's called slipknot song or magic the gathering card wait what about or, all these other questions you didn't ask no i asked all of them except for i i told i skipped the uh I mean, do you want to talk about your your fight with Dale, Carrie? Do you want to talk about that here? Yeah, I mean, it's not much of a story. <laughs> uh, Dale is my friend Brandon uh, from Modesto. Everyone calls him Dale. Um, one time we were we were like drinking at our friend's apartment uh, where George and I used to live. And uh, what was happening? I was like, I was frustrated about trying to find a drummer because our drummer at the time like was bailing on a tour that we wanted to do. And uh, I was like, fuck, man, like can't find a drummer. Like there's no drummers in Modesto. Like what are we going to do? And then Brandon was just, he's just like a dude who just is so hilarious, but he likes to push people's buttons. And um, he just was like, like, you're never, <laughs> he was like, you're never gonna, you're never gonna find a drummer. All right. He said like, you're never gonna, like, none of this is gonna amount to anything anyways, bro. Like <laughs> something like that. <laughs> and I like just lost it because I was so frustrated and just like, he's also like huge. He's like taller than George. He's like <laughs> six, six or something. I don't know. He's, he's a tall dude. Uh, and, and he's like a big guy. Uh, so I just like lost it and like ran at him and uh, tackled him. And then our, our friend Rodney was like, man, you guys better take that shit outside. So we did. And uh, it was pretty much a tie from what I remember. Like we were both very drunk, but I did get a couple hits on him. And like one of the hits like kind of like bloodied his mouth a little bit. <laughs> so there's this infamous photo i don't know who has it of brandon and he's like going like this like and he's got (laughs) blood on his mouth and he's wearing our t-shirt damn uh, yeah people be like oh yeah like after saying that your band's gonna amount to nothing yeah yeah he (laughs) of course he he like it's that sounds cruel and it was at the time but it's like he did this was not like uh this was like a very and it is still to this day a very close friend. So it was, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's the fight with Big Dale. Damn. Um, oh, well, I circled back to that question. Lucas, I have a question for you. Okay. What was it like uh, going to a Drake concert with Carrie? <laughs> we did go to a Drake concert. I do have a quote written down from you here at the, from the Drake concert, Carrie. You said. Um, you said that it's like everyone from prom who wouldn't hang out with me is all here at this show. 
That's what you said about the audience at the Drake concert. Yeah. <laughs> that was like my like third time, fourth, third or fourth time seeing him too. Yeah, you you knew every word to every single song. Yeah, he just has too many. I mean, like anytime you go to a show that's that level of like you know that's like that it's like a world famous superstar show like it's he's got so many hits and stuff like that that it's just gonna be like he's gonna give you like 30 seconds of each hook and then like that's pretty much it uh, and we saw we saw amigos too oh yeah man they did not give a fuck no one guy was literally sitting on sitting stage down. just doing nothing he was sitting yeah. down on stage just man i kind of love that absolutely nothing yeah i was really yeah. really tired yeah. Uh yeah, I yeah, I don't know. I I when I saw him the first time, when I saw Drake the first time, um it was like 2014 uh at like the Honda Center in Anaheim and obviously he only had like three records at that point. So like he was doing all sort like it was he was really leaning into the songs, you know. Um but uh this was still I mean it was still cool. It was just a weird that was like right before we went to Europe, I think, in 2018, right? Uh, yeah, I think when when you and I. Yeah, I feel like that was like right before I was like about I like I had had nothing to do for like two days or something. It was like someone go to this with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It was tight. I'm yeah, it was tight. Did. I really hate when they do the fucking like, you know, like uh, like the. They divide the the crowd up like, all right, left side. Like, let's see if you could be louder than the right side. I get that you got to get the people and stuff, but I was like, man, like, can we just hear like the whole verse, uh, you right. know, this or the no, whole song of one of he these? He didn't and... finish a whole song. Yeah. I, I think the entire night he didn't finish. But he did um, do uh for he did that little baby song uh where they had the uh the inflatable Ferrari fly around. Or Lamborghini. Yeah. yeah, there there was a car flying over the audience yeah. for sure. Was that inflatable? I thought it was like I thought it did not look inflatable to me. I don't know. Is it a drone or something? Uh, it was on strings of some. It was on some, you know some kind of cable. Uh, okay. um, I thought. Um, Impressive, to say the least. Yeah, yeah, that was that was really tight. We got Scout and Brian in chat. Mm. Chat's popping off. Um, so should we do our should we do our little little final segment? Yeah, yeah, I think we should. I, I I'm curious to know how um how Carrie's gonna do for this segment. Okay. Uh, so last week we we did uh we did a segment called um what was it? Oh, it was Nick Cave song or Magic Card. Yeah. So uh we've we've selected an artist for you, and you have to pick if uh the 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 name that I say is a is a song of theirs or a magic card. Oh shit! Oh, fuck. They've caught another thoughtsies. Five dollars. Five bucks. Man. Um. Okay. So you ready, Kay? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. First one is Doom Whisperer. Magic the Gathering. Correct. One for one. Pulse of the Maggots. Slipknot for sure. Right on. Deceiver Exarch. Magic the Gathering. It's fucking good. Skin Ticket. Ooh. I don't know that much that much slipknot stuff. Uh I'm gonna say Magic the Gathering. That one's wrong. That's a uh that's a slipknot song. Okay. Um Blood for Bones. <laughs> Magic the Gathering. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the Nameless. Slipknot. Execute. Man, uh, Magic the Gathering? That is a Slipknot song. Uh, okay. Eyeless. That's Slipknot. Yep. Terminate. Uh... Magic the Gathering. That yes. is that is correct. And the last one, uh, Fatal Push. Uh, Magic the Gathering. Got correct. it. Lucas, how do you do? Eight out of ten, baby. Wow. Very strong. 
very strong. I'm sure if Dan ever saw this, he, he the ones I got wrong, he'd be like, bro, that's Slipknot for sure. <laughs> um, most well versed in Slipknot out of the band. Uh, Carrie Amp Guy 999 asks, Carrie, has anyone ever called you a puss while surfing? <laughs> <laughs> Nine nine nine. Yeah. <laughs> John made like a like a Skype or a Twitch thing for this. Uh, yeah. John Cudlip. John Cudlip uh, took me to uh, the Newport Jetties and dropped in on me and then did an air over me, and then <laughs> as he was doing it, called me a puss. And then he he yeah, then yeah. he then he uh, then he like wrote a launder song about it. Damn, we're gonna have Amp Guy nine 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 on this show pretty soon. Yeah, tell you right now. <laughs> right. Thank you so much. Okay, so we've lost our last game. So we, I think we won one out of like five. Watching you just punt right and left over here, young man. Yeah, see, I've never played this format before. Historic, <laughs> historic <laughs> format. True. You, this is your so first my deck, time. My deck sucks. Uh, yeah, everyone ones does because we we really tailor make them to be on brand and you gotta make some sacrifices when you do that yeah we the one car that there's a there's this you guys have a song called glint um Mm -hmm. that's i think my favorite song to watch you guys play live because it's uh has some really intense parts yeah Um, but uh there's a card called glint sleeve siphoner that we wanted to figure into the deck and it would have made it even worse (laughs) <laughs> so all in all you know it's okay all right it was a strong run it was a strong run yeah. um well carrie we'd like to thank you for having uh for coming on to thoughts these interviews it was a pleasure yeah. um we are uh we're gonna keep we're gonna keep jamming some games for a minute uh mm-hmm. on here i think because we have, we have to hit a certain amount of uh we have to stream for an hour and 15 minutes to get our uh to get our fucking like premium thing so that we can have the videos on demand yeah so so we're going to end end our interview here but we'll we'll continue to cole and i will continue to uh play matches together and try and talk shit about you after you leave brian brian says someone someone tell carrie i said ha oh fuck it's over brian missed the interview (laughs) <laughs> you have to catch it on YouTube, but all right. Um, well, thanks, K for thanks, K for for chilling with us. Somebody in chat says Black Brick was brilliant. Yeah, that's um, not wrong. All right, play. Should we play the outro? Yep. All hey, right. Thanks, you thanks. guys, for having me on this shit. Yeah, of course. Thanks, K. See y'all later. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah.